when they had finished supper, the Passover celebration, and having sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And as they were going, Jesus said to them, All of you will be offended at me and will run away. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I've been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, well, maybe all of them will run away, but not me. said vehemently, even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. And they all said the same thing. They came to a place called Gethsemane, which means an oil press. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground, and he prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. And he said, Abba, Abba. Take this cup from me. But not what I want, but what you want. He came back and he found them sleeping. And he said to Simon Peter, Simon, Simon. Are you sleeping? Couldn't you even stay awake one hour? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away and he came back, he prayed again, saying the same words. And he came back to them, and again, he found them sleeping. And their eyes were weighed down. They didn't know what to say to him. He, he came back still a third time, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's go. Look! My betrayer comes. And while he was still speaking, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, came with a crowd from the chief priests and the scribes, armed with swords and clubs. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, and he said to them, The one I kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away securely. And he came and he went right up to Jesus. And he kissed him. And he said, Rabbi, and they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who was following him drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus said, have you come out as against an insurrectionist with swords and clubs to capture me? 
Day after day I was with you in the temple, in the temple teaching. You did not arrest me. But this has happened. In order that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And forsaking him, they all fled. There was even a young man who was following him, who was clothed only in a, in a linen garment over his naked body. And they seized him. But leaving the linen cloth, he ran away naked. They brought him to the house of the high priest. And all the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of our people gathered together. And Peter also followed at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards warming himself by the light of the fire. Now, the chief priests saw testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they couldn't find him because the witnesses all bore false testimony. They lied. And their testimony did not agree. So some of them stood up in the midst and they said, We heard this man say, I will tear down this temple made with hands, and in three days I will build up another not made with hands. But even so, their testimony did not agree. So the chief priest stood up in the midst and he said, Well, I have no answer to make to all these charges they're bringing against you. But Jesus was silent and said nothing. Again, the chief priest questioned him, and he said to him, Are you? Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the chief priest rent his robes and he said, what need do we have for further witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. How does it appear to you? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And they began to spit on him and to strike him in the head and to cover his face and say to him, Come on, prophesy. And the guards led him away, slapping him in the face. And meanwhile, Peter was down below in the courtyard. And one of the servant maids of the high priest saw him, and, and she went over, and, and she looked at him, and she said, hey, you, you were with that Nazarene, Jesus, but he denied it and said, oh, I neither know nor understand what you mean. He went out into 
to the gateway of the house. Again, the maiden saw him, and she began to say to those who were standing around in the courtyard, He's one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those who were standing around said to him, Hey, of course you're one of them. You're a Galilean. And Peter began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear vehemently, I do not know this man you're talking about. in the morning, chief priests, scribes, and elders had a meeting, developed a plan, found Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. And Pilate chief priests accused him of many things. So the Pilate again questioned him and said to him, Well, have you no answer to me? You can see how many things they're charging you with. But Jesus was silent and said nothing. So that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast, he used to release to them any one prisoner whom they asked. And there was a man in prison whose name was Barabbas, who was bound with those who had committed murder, the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the insurrection. And coming up, the crowd, the people, those who had been Jesus support all through his ministry and all his time in Jerusalem. All of us came up and began to demand that he observe the custom. And Pilate said, well, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Because he had perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. The chief priest, able to incite the crowd to ask for Barabbas instead. And so Pilate said to them, Well, what then do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? And they Crucify him! Pilate said, What crime has he committed? They, they shouted vehemently. Crucify! 
crucified. And so Pilate wanted to satisfy the crowd, the people, handed Barabbas over to them. And having flogged Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. They led him away into the Praetorium, which was the barracks of the legion in Jerusalem. And they called together the whole cohort of 400 men. And they, they clothed him in a purple robe. And they plaited a crown of thorns and ha, put it on his head. And they began to salute him, saying, Hail! <laughs> King of the Jews! And they spit on him. And they struck him in the head with a stick. And they knelt down paying mock homage to him. When they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, of the robe of purple. And they put his clothes back on him. They led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought him to a place called Gaul means the place of the skull. <clears throat> and they crucified him. And divided his garments among them by throwing dice on them to see who would get what. It was the third hour, nine o'clock in the morning. They crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two insurrectionists, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by mocked him, saying, Ah, <laughs> you who would tear down the temple and build it up in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross. The chief priests and scribes mocked him to one another, saying, How well, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ the king of Israel, come down from the cross and we might see and believe. And even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Now at the sixth hour, 12 o'clock, there was a deep darkness that descended all over the entire land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi! That means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who were standing at the foot of the cross 
filled a sponge full of sour wine, put it on a stick, and held it up to him to drink, saying, Oh, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus, Jesus gave a loud cry. And there were women who were watching from a distance. There was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger brother, and Joseph, and Salome, who had been with him, served him when he was in Galilee, and many of the women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. So when it was evening, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Passover, before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was looking for the kingdom of God, took courage, went to Pilate, and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate wondered if, he'd all, if he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if he had already died. When he confirmed it, he gave the corpse to Joseph. Joseph went and bought a linen shroud, and he took him down from the cross, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been carved out of the rock. And he rolled a big stone. Mother of James. Song. 